All right, guys, welcome back to the shack. And tonight I got a topic that I've been getting a lot of messages about, and it's been an upgrade that I've been needed to do to my secondary enclosure for quite a while. Uh, and that is going to be airflow and ventilation inside your enclosure. Uh, coincidentally, I had two or three people message me today having issues with uh, fans not doing what they wanted them to do, uh, not getting enough airflow, smoke coming out of places on the enclosure that it shouldn't be, and that type of thing. And coincidentally, uh, I have a new fan that I've installed today on my secondary enclosure. And so we're gonna discuss pros and cons of fans, uh, some things to look at when you're installing your fans and ways to control your airflow and make sure you're getting the most bang for your buck regardless of the size of the fan that you have. So if that's something you're interested in, stick around, we'll be right back. All right, guys, this is the uh, fan setup that I have on my secondary enclosure. If you're not familiar with it, if you didn't watch uh, the video about the build, uh, the way this works is I've got the fan mounted up here on the top, and I've got the duct work here that goes through the wall, and I've got one of those little dryer flaps on the outside that opens once positive pressure hits it uh, to allow the fan to, to expel outdoors. Uh, this little box basically is just my collector. Uh, instead of <clears throat> trying to do a round ho hose to go into the uh, enclosure, what I have done is, and I'll show you the inside in just a second, is this box is sealed on the inside. I used uh, HVAC tape on the inside of it to seal it up. It's also all the joints are glued. Uh, this little adapter plate here, all that does, guys, is the fan, that hole in the top of that plate is the same size as that port on the fan, and it just sits on top of there, sticks down in there, and then I've got some screws that hold to the mountain bracket right here, hold that guy in place so that it doesn't move, it doesn't go anywhere, uh, also cuts down on vibration, so nothing's over here vibrating, making unnecessary noise. Uh, it pulls air from this chamber here. There's an entrance going into the, into the enclosure that way is a one inch hole. And then there's the bottom of this box is cut into this other little small box here that runs the length of my enclosure. And I have another uh, five holes, one inch in diameter that are between this little channel and the inside of the enclosure. And so what that does is it pulls the air from this box, which in turn pulls from one hole right here, that's one inch in diameter and then it goes through the bottom of the box into this channel, which pulls from those additional five inches of holes. So that gives me, you know, they're smaller holes, but that gives me about six inches of uh, area as far as the, the air to be pulled through. And one secret that I will tell you guys on fans, any fan you get, uh, if you put the fan in the enclosure and you seal this enclosure up just as tight as you can get it, you're not gonna get adequate airflow. I don't, it doesn't matter how big of a fan you have. The object is not to have a really, really, really powerful fan. The object is to move a column of air, clean air goes in, in the case of an external exhaust, you got clean air going in the front of the machine, preferably even with, in my opinion, and this is just my opinion, even with or below the work area, uh, that column of air goes through there, replacing the air that is saturated with smoke, allowing the fan to pull the smoke-saturated air out and discharge it out the back. If you don't have that air that can come into the front of the machine, then you're doing yourself an injustice because the fan, no matter how hard it tries, is not going to be able to provide adequate ventilation to extract the smoke out to where you want it to go. So. Just a little tip for you. Uh, this fan still works, but I was having problems with getting enough airflow to keep up with the 20 watt. And so I had been looking at uh, upgrading it and putting a bigger fan in. And uh, I guess uh, the company Han and Juan, and I hope I'm saying that right guys, uh, they reached out to me and had saw the video apparently and offered to let me try out one of their fans in my enclosure to see if it would help me with uh, the airflow issue I was having. Now, the one thing that I will tell you is if you have a design like mine, I had to slightly resize my, 
my little intake box here had to be slightly resized. This is the top part of it that I had to cut off because this fan, as you can see, guys, it's, it's a lot beefier than the one I took off of there. Uh, and this is the way the inside of that box works is this just slides on here like so. And that's where it pulls the air into there through that box. But I had to trim my box down, make it a little shorter uh, to avoid having to relocate my exhaust tube. Uh, but this is the part of the box that I took off when I took that one off of there. Uh, like I said, the fan still works. It just didn't have enough, like, it just didn't seem like it was moving enough air to keep up with this machine since I made it into a 20 watt. So, but this this guy here uh, is available on Amazon and I'm gonna drop some links down below. Like I said, these guys were, were nice enough to let me try this thing out. So I'll put the links in the description of the video. They have, this is the four inch model because that's what my duct was and I told them I wanted to stick with a four inch. Might not have been a bad idea to step it up to a five or a six, but I just, I wanted to try because I felt like I could get enough airflow out of a four inch fan and not have the, the noise or power consumption of some of the larger fans. And so that's what we're doing. We're gonna try the four inch. If it doesn't work out, I may step it up to a five later on, but that's gonna require me to redo my duct going outside. I really do not wanna do that. Uh, this fan, they advertise it at 116 CFM. But no matter how powerful a fan is, guys, and I wanna to try to give you a, a demonstration on that. Uh, if, you're, if, if your fan is not properly set up, if you don't have proper airflow, then you're not gonna get the benefit. So I'm gonna use this little guy here just to kind of demonstrate to you, and maybe you can hear this. All right, so this thing is blowing a pretty good bit of air out of here, but it's also got, if you look, the fan has the same size hole where it pulls the air in as it does where it discharges. If you cover that hole up, listen to the fan, you can, you can tell. You, if, if your fan is restrictive, you are not letting it do what it can do. And no matter how big of a fan you put on there, if it cannot get air to feed that fan, all it's gonna do is just, it's gonna be like a blender inside there. It's just gonna mix that air up and it's just gonna get more and more saturated with smoke. You gotta have the fresh air intake for this thing to discharge. Because a lot of people, you know, they're, they're trying to go bigger and bigger and bigger with the fans. And, and I had a guy today that I pointed out to him that if the fan cannot get enough air to properly blow outward, it's not gonna be able to pull the smoke out of the enclosure. So those are things to remember. So when you're putting your fan system together and you're trying to ventilate your shop, that's what you wanna remember. Just like with this enclosure, I've got this little hole right here in the front and that allows fresh air to come in. I've got a few other holes for cabling and that type of thing that also allow fresh air to come into the enclosure. So I'm gonna open it up, show what the inside of this thing looks like. I've got a big burn file on there. We're gonna turn that on. And I'm gonna to try to restrict my airflow to kind of give you guys an idea and show you uh, that this, this fan does work. It works really well. Actually works better than the one I had before. Uh, so I, I'm gonna be sticking with that one and I'll keep the other as a spare or if I have another enclosure situation come up then I need to put one on. All right guys, I don't have a fan on right now. That noise you hear <laughs> is that, that, that massive 20 watt module there. But you can't really see all of the exhaust holes. I've got the one right here that goes directly into my, my fan box. And then there's one here, 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 and back here that go into the duct system that I have on the outside of the box. And I did that to keep from making the box so big. Uh, but to allow me to have uh, the airflow that I needed. Now, I try to avoid having my fresh air intake near the uh, port for the smoke exhaust. And reason being, I don't want the fresh air coming in there and just going straight back out. Uh, you kind of want to pull it through the work area so that it replaces the smoke infested air and has the, the air to be discharged. So that's the whole reason that this little spot up here in the front of my machine, I got this little tray. It served as a pass through for a little while and now it basically serves for an air inlet to allow a thin layer of air to go across my workspace over here and out those ports. So I'm gonna move the camera back. I'm gonna fire everything up and I'm gonna do this burn like this to show you the difference between proper airflow and improper airflow. Uh, and it's burned about an inch of that. Um, 
square that I've got in there. And this is just a steady burn. The machine, the, the, the laser is cutting a square, so it is just a steady 20 watt burn running 100 speed and 100 percent power output and you can kind of see some swirling going on in the back back there with the ventilation all right so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to take me some painter's tape and i'm going to go around the outside of this enclosure and i'm going to restrict my airflow to kind of show you what happens when you do not have proper airflow all right, so you see I got a pretty good little smoke plume in there now. Uh, I have taped every piece of this thing trying to get it to pull down. <laughs> and it's still managing to pull some air from somewhere. It's probably coming in around my camera up there or something. I don't, I'm not sure where it's getting any air, but it is. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to take my little door down here at the bottom. I'm going to open it up. You can kind of see how much smoke's actually starting to build in there now. So I'm going to open up the airflow down here on the bottom and let it have some air. There we go. I've got the bottom flap opened up so that it can get some air. And let's see. There we go. Just that fast, the plume of smoke is gone. So air restriction is a bad thing with laser enclosures, guys. All right, guys, I, I hope that the demonstration was somewhat useful, entertaining, or whatever. Uh, but I taped up every crack I could find, and it was still pulling enough air to vacate with this enclosure. But now, when I built this machine, I intentionally left one-eighth of an inch spacing uh, below the lid right here uh, where I'm pulling this piece off. I have a 1 18th gap pretty much all the way around the door on this guy. And the purpose of that was to allow fresh air to come in. Uh, so I don't have to have big vents or anything like that. Uh, because you gotta have a certain amount of air exchange to be able to get that smoke out of there. But this little door here, typically it doesn't, it, it, I was gonna put me a little fastener on there to fasten it, but I didn't because I wanted to use this as added airflow. But you can notice on this enclosure, when I shut the lid, I can shut the lid completely. I've still got a slight spacing around this lid. I mean, it's a little tighter there because it's wood. Uh, and then the top up here, the top doesn't have a whole lot of gap here, but I wanted a little bit of airflow to come in through here. And so I left that little eighth of an inch and that gives me basically a little column of air when the fan engages it gives me a little column of air that comes from the front goes across the workspace and out the back that was uh that was the way i designed my airflow to operate and it, it does a pretty good job you have to tape up the crack to uh to get it to uh to, to try to pull down but with this fan i i can't get this one to bog down as well as i could the other one with this one it actually seems like it speeds up uh when you when you obstruct it uh, it's relatively quiet. It's not as loud as the uh, 20 watt module. And I'll get over here where you can hear it. So it's relatively quiet. Uh, one feature that I did like about it that I didn't know it did uh, is it has two snap rings on there that you can pop those snap rings. You can actually take the fan out, clean it out with air and reinsert the fan module, the blower module in there without having to dismount everything. And I couldn't do that with my other fan. So give me a second, I'm gonna show you how that works. All right, so the way it works is you've got these little black clips right here that hold these rings around the main uh, chassis of the fan. And when you take those out, you can just kind of pop these guys out. You kind of open these up, but they kind of have a, like a little flex to them. And then when you open those guys up, the fan module slides out. And I thought this was a cool feature because now you can take this guy off. You can clean it with the air hose. You can clean it with, you know, whatever you need to clean it. And then you can just slide this guy back up in there. Uh, I haven't tried taking the uh, propeller off, but it actually looks like you might be able to do that. But I'm not going to do it. I don't want to break it the first week that I've had it, just being too curious. Uh, so 
but it's a, it's, it's a lot larger if you look at the the fan and the motor it's a lot larger motor than what's on the one i've been using and even the the fan it's got a different design this one's more of like the uh, squirrel cage type design where this is more like the pc fan design so the the pitch of the blades is slightly different but so far it works pretty well guys uh can't speak to it for long term but if you're interested in a fan and you think this would work for you uh like i said i will be putting the the links down below so you can look into that and it actually got a little dirty <laughs> those couple of little burns i did uh it does have mounting screws and that's the reason i knew this came apart was because i was trying to figure out how in the world i was going to put two mounting screws here to mount this thing to my enclosure but then i noticed it looked like it would come apart and so i took that apart and uh put screws in and had to put it back together. So that's how I learned about that. All right, guys, I hope the video was uh, helpful to some of you. I know a lot of you are way more advanced and probably know way more about this than I do, but I try to explain it to people as if they have no knowledge of this stuff because there's a lot of people that's getting into the hobby that, that maybe they weren't uh, engineers or uh, have never really dealt with these kind of things. And I, and, and I get some, some questions sometimes and it seems like stuff that you would think people would know, but a lot of us, we just take for granted that other people understand some of these little basic principles. You actually want the air intake to be slightly less than the air being going, up, going out of the enclosure. That way you create a bit of a vacuum or negative pressure inside the enclosure, which makes sure that the smoke goes out the exhaust port instead of just seeping out of random cracks inside the enclosure. Because if you have way more air intake, then you do fan that's when you start getting that 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 smoke seeping out from the cracks or coming out from under the enclosure is because you have too much airflow you got too many openings on the intake side you need to close some of those guys up and create that that suction in those in those places that you have smoke coming out once you generate a little bit of negative pressure there the smoke will not come out it will actually stay in the box or be expelled out the exhaust. You want that, that negative pressure to pull that air, outside air in to replace the smoke air instead of letting it come out into the shop or your house or wherever you are. But that's gonna be it for tonight, guys. Like I said, I got that fan in. Uh, if you're interested in the Han and Guan four inch fan, uh, there'll be a link down below for the four inch and I'm sure you can navigate through there and find the other options if you want to. But I think four inch fans are adequate for uh, diode layers lasers currently now when they move it up to 40 watts you know things may change but so far uh the fan that i'm the, this fan seems to do really well for the 20 watt laser module the other one worked well for the 10 but with the 20 you got a lot more speed cover a lot more area a lot faster which generates a lot more smoke and it just wasn't cutting it for me and so I wanted to upgrade it. And I know some of you have heard me complain about that enclosure for a while, but it appears that I've gotten that fixed now. Thanks for stopping by guys. I really appreciate it. I appreciate the support. Uh, if you haven't been made aware of it already, uh, myself and Steve will be doing a Christmas special. We're calling it a Christmas special because uh, I'm gonna be inside the house because it's supposed to be 15 degrees here with a negative wind chill and in Alabama that is unheard of. So I'm probably gonna be inside the house uh, maybe I'll try to position the camera where you can see the Christmas tree, get it all festive and stuff. But Steve and I decided that for some of you guys, we would be we would be here if you have any questions. If you you know if you wake up Christmas morning and you got a laser and you got questions, then that might be a good place for you to go to get some real time answers uh, to those questions. Go ahead and hit that notify me button on the video, and uh, YouTube will kind of remind you. And you can be here and like I said, hang out with me and Steve and just talk shop, or you can get some questions answered. So. Looking forward to that, and uh, hopefully all will go well, and Sunday night we'll have that. So, But that's going to be it for tonight, guys. I just want to make this quick video. I had to get my, my enclosure up to speed, got that handled, so I'm calling it quits for tonight. And until next time, guys, as always, be safe and have a good day.